Hello and welcome to uh, the podcast. I'm on my own today. Uh, Eve Marie is busy. So I came up with an interesting subject that I think you'll enjoy um, about um, what to paint next. And I think it's a subject that, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, uh, students who've come to my class often say, you know, what do I paint? So I think this is kind of an interesting thing to have a chat to you about. <clears throat> um, you know, obviously it depends on what kind of uh, painting you like and, you know, where you're up to with your um, painting. But, you know, you want to be inspired and you want to feel attached to something that you're painting that comes from inside out. At the same time, you can obviously look around you, look at nature or things that you like in the house or things that you've seen and use those as a prompt. And, you know, I do both. I, I'm doing an exhibition um, in a couple of weeks and that's all about my scenery around me. Uh, it's the landscapes and rocks and mountains of Andalusia which is in southern Spain, <laughs> where I live. And there, you know, that environment is really inspirational for me. And it moves me to want to express that. And that's what I'm really getting at when, when I'm talking about this. What it's really about is painting compositions, not subjects. Look for the abstract shapes um, in the tones and contrasts of whatever it is that you're looking at. And you want to kind of make it different. I've written a few notes here to just keep me on point for the podcast. You can turn anything into something by looking at the shapes, the composition, the darks and the lights. Well, you know, those are fundament fundamental in, in your painting. You know, you start to, 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 to begin with to play and get some color down and do, do some mark making or shapes and whatever, which is great. That gets you in the zone and you have to go from the thinking about it to creating. And that shifts over to the right side of the brain. If we're in the right side, if we're in the creative side, then we will get that, we will get that feedback. If we stay in thought mode, it's very difficult and, um, you know, you'll struggle with it. So staying in the, the right side of the brain to be creative. So whatever it is that you're looking at. So for, for, I can only really give you an example of myself. I'm surrounded by all this beautiful landscape and mountains and olive groves and you know, lovely fields of mango trees and all kinds of wonderful things. But we get very atmospheric skies. We sometimes get a lot of mist and the mist comes down below the mountain. So I can see the mountain, but there's a mist in the valley and I'm quite high up. So I'm like in the clouds, <laughs> which is fantastic. So that's the thing that inspires me that you will see in my paintings that kind of atmospheric feel of the landscape and the mountainscape or even the seascape and the rocks and the and and you know the fields so i'm not copying i'm not um you know going painting it mountain by mountain or field by field i'm just getting the feel of how it makes me feel and then putting the composition in as I'm working towards it. So think about that. Paint compositions, not subjects. What shapes do you see? Where is the shadow? Where is the light? Where is the sun? <laughs> um, you know, it's casting shadows. And have a look at those shadow shapes. And really with whatever you're doing, looking at the shape of it, even if you then contort the shape, that's what abstraction is really all about. Um, you want to 
you know, turn it around, make it your own. So even if it's a vase on a table with some flowers or, you know, you're doing some kind of still life with fruit or, you know, whatever it might be. Take a look at some of the masters. Look at Cezanne, for example, even Picasso, how they took those shapes and then moved it around, made it interesting. One of the ways um, that is really will get you started on this is to do some contour drawing. And that is <laughs> you put your paper in front of you, get your pen, and then if you're looking at a still life, then only look at the only look at the subject. Don't look at the paper. Find a starting point and let your eye travel around those shapes. And they'll inevitably go wonky, but you'll come out with a really interesting abstract uh, interpretation of whatever it is that you're looking at. And that could apply to landscape, it could apply to looking at a figure, it could apply to anything. <laughs> and that's kind of will give you a prompt into it and um, will start you painting. But the most important thing is you get inspiration as you start. If you don't start, nothing happens. You have to make a beginning, you have to start. And you know, my professor many, many years ago always used to say to me, just start something. Doesn't matter what it is, just scribble, doodle. <laughs> Whatever it is, just begin something. Because it's in the beginning then that the energy starts to come up to the surface. If you just stay blank, what, what can happen? Nothing. So you want to be in a place where you're beginning. And from that beginning, then something starts to happen. And um, in my next video, I'm going to be transforming an old painting, which is quite a big painting, into something else. And I've done that with a few of them for the exhibition because I've had some paintings lying around and, um, you know, they haven't sold. I like them, but, you know, I might as well use them. But they gave me a foundation for something else. And it's always kind of quite difficult to, to paint over something. It's as difficult as it is to start with a white canvas. So what I did is I got a roller and I've got, got it here actually, I can show you. Um, and I just put some paint on it and I started rolling paint over it. And lovely things start happening and you find yourself moving from the, right, uh, the left side of the brain to the right side because you've got motion and then through that motion you can build momentum and suddenly you find yourself in the zone and that's what you want to be. Now you could start that with your in your sketchbook if you want. I mean obviously that's always um, a really good place to start but I would say if you're going to do that set yourself a time limit. Say give yourself 15 minutes on one page and then 15 minutes on another, and then 15 minutes on another, and then maybe go down to 10, and maybe then to five, just to, you know, to, to get the engine moving. Because that's what it is. You know, your inspiration comes in the doing. Okay, there are times when you get inspired and you want to go and do something naturally. But on those occasions that that doesn't happen, you just need to start. So giving yourself um, a time limit is a really good way. And I have tons of, I can't remember, 20 years worth of sketchbooks where, you know, a lot of them are just full of scribbles and playing around, you know, messing around with some paint or just some charcoal or pencils or crayons just to get me, you know, off the starting board because that's the most important thing. What to paint next <laughs> depends on where, you know, what it is that you want to paint, what turns you on. Do you want to do something abstracted from outside, from your landscape, from your room? Or do you want to do something intuitively from your heart and see what happens? Either which way, <laughs> you have to start. 
And if you really want to get intuitive and connect, there are two things that you can do. <laughs> Close your eye, get your pencil ready or your charcoal or whatever it is and your sketchbook. Close your eyes and start drawing. Just scribble, just scribble, scribble or whatever. Go with the movement. Open your eyes, turn the page, do exactly the same thing with your other hand, your non-dominant hand. That gets you going. Suddenly you've got some shapes in front of you that you've got, you haven't been thinking about because you haven't been looking at it. <laughs> and it's really fun to do. You'd be fascinated. Just then if you get in your, your mind, I'm going to move my body into this. So instead of doing it just with the movement of your hand, do it with the movement of your arm. So it sort of really comes from your body, from your back, shoulder, down your arm, into your fingers, onto the paper. It's as if you're kind of drawing with your fingers. That connects you, that starts you. And if you can get into that free feeling and free mode of drawing or painting, then you'll shift from the left side of the brain to the right. You'll shift into thinking to creativity and that's what you want. So <laughs> I hope you find that helpful. Obviously there's some other things that you can you can do to start. I sometimes listen to music and you know dependent on the music that I put on I might put a playlist on of a mixture of you know modern music, jazz, classical and and see how I feel. I might, you know, sometimes with some old kind of great songs that I love, you know, you can't help moving and getting into the groove that way. Go with what feels right to you. But the main thing is to start. If you don't start, you 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 don't start, <laughs> so you don't produce anything. So what to paint next is make a decision. Do you want to do something from the outside in? or the inside out. And obviously, you know, there's so many things to look at on YouTube, on Pinterest, on Instagram, and you know, that might spark your interest, that you might just feel, you know what, that looks really lovely. I love that color, color combination. I'm gonna try something with that. Or, you know, I really like that idea of doing something like that with a landscape. I'm going to try that. So those are also prompts. Again, start. I don't want you to be copying, really. I'm saying that I don't want you to be. Who am I? <laughs> it's best not to copy. It's best to get a feel of what it is that you like about whatever it is you've seen. So, you know, if it's the colour combination... Get those colours out and see what you can do with those colours. You know, if it's the design, just kind of have a feel of how that design um, goes without copying it. It wants to come from you. It wants to be authentic. It wants to come from your heart. It wants to be your creativity. So interesting subject. And I would love to hear your comments. You know, how do you start a painting? What have you found the most helpful if you're kind of sitting there in front of a canvas wondering what to do or when you're thinking about it. And that would be really um, great feedback to also help other people because I think we all go through this and the, the, the way forward, the way to move forward is just to start doodle. <laughs> If the worst comes to the worst, just start doodling because from the doodling, something else will happen and you're off and away. So <laughs> leave a comment if you enjoyed this video and uh, you'd like to have more, then press the notification bell and subscribe, which would be fantastic. And it helps me spread the word and helps other artists, you know, get inspired and answer some of their questions. So happy painting, just get started and um, enjoy. If you're really, really struggling, I have a free mini course, uh, abstract mini course, which you can do, which will give you a guide 
and go through a pr the process of beginning a painting which you might find helpful. So that's in the description and I've got lots of other interesting things on my website at uh, joyfayartist.com. So <laughs> take care and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.